Well, we're here talking about corporations taking charge, and I'm really delighted that Noel Quinn, the group CEO of HSBC, is joining me now. So welcome, Noel. Thank you, Sarah. Good to be here. And I'm going to kick off because we're talking a lot about performance and, as I said, corporations taking charge. You've had some great results. You've won some great awards last year, and you've clearly defined your net zero commitments. Then COVID hit. Yep. What did that do to your plans? Uh, COVID threw the whole world into uh, a state of disarray, and, and everyone had to react extremely fast to a set of circumstances that I don't think any of us in the world had fully prepared for. Uh, but I'm really pleased with the way my colleagues, you know, 230,000 people in 60 countries around the world responded to that challenge. They provided great support to our customers. You know, in total last year, we were involved in nearly 1.9 trillion of lending or fundraising activity on behalf of clients across the world. Um, they supported each other tremendously well. You know, they had to adapt their own personal lives and to adapt the way they worked. And within the space of two weeks, you know, we had 90% of, of our colleagues around the world having to work from home. And they didn't miss a beat. They did really well. Um, but it, it, it's been a challenge for customers in particular. They, you know, their business models have been radically changed over the past uh, 12 months. And of course, around the world, we saw different challenges, particularly in emerging markets, as we're seeing now with vaccines. So how do you see your role as a global company helping drive that inclusion in ESG in those emerging markets? Well, I think uh, the COVID situation was a wake up call to us all and particularly myself. You know, we, we proved to us just how fragile the global economy is and, and we've had a massive shock with COVID. Fortunately, vaccines are on the horizon and they're, they're being rolled out. And all credit to the scientists and the health workers that have got us to that situation. We may not be so lucky with the climate crisis. And I think that's the wake up call. A climate crisis may not be reversible. And that's why I think banks, financial services more widely, but also customers have taken on board the need to make rapid progress and catch up on the work that's needed around uh, sustainability. And that's why we published our own quite ambitious target to be net zero by 2050, not just as a bank, but through our customer activity and our financed emissions. We'll be there in 2030 as a bank. I want to be there as a portfolio of customer activity by 2050. And it's, it's central to everything we do now. Yeah, let's pick up on that because uh, we're only as good as the measurements. And yeah. I know that you're, you know, you, you're working within the updated Equator principles now, the World Economic Forum metrics. Are you happy with those global benchmarks or do you think they could go further? I, I think the real job for us now is to take the words net zero and turn them into a definitive framework of what that means for us in the banking sector, particularly. How do we translate net zero into, as an ambition, into tangible action, into targets in the next five years, 10 years and 15 years? How do we report against those targets? How do we report in a consistent manner so that when one bank reports, it looks similar to the way another bank reports, that we're not double counting or we're not omitting relevant information? And that's the work I'm, I'm also fortunate to be chairing the task force of the financial services sector, uh, looking at exactly that, how to build the operating methodologies and the framework and the architecture to give transparent, consistent, meaningful reporting into the market, not only of our own activities, but of the activities of our customers. What is our carbon footprint today and how is it going to move over time? How's that going? It's good. We're um, aiming to publish um, essentially a white paper of how we as a banking sector turn the ambition into a framework of reporting. And we're aiming to do that by the middle of the year as a white paper um, that will set out the, what we believe to be, you know, in, in, in working title terms, the practitioner's guide of how you move from an ambition of net zero into tangible reporting every quarter and every year. Now, of course, we talk very much about the E in uh, ESG. Um, HSBC works across the globe, different jurisdictions, different standards. Um, some have called 
into question that S in the social in some of your key markets, such as yeah. Hong Kong and China. How do you manage that? I mean, we've operated for 155 years in over 60 countries of the world, and each of those countries have very different um, economics, politics, cultural norms. And as an international bank, you have to respect all of the markets in which you operate in, and you've got to recognize you're a guest in all of those countries that you operate in. And first and foremost, what you have to do is to respect the laws of those countries. So you cannot choose which laws to follow or which laws not to follow. And, and what you try to do is to operate for the good of the communities in which you serve. So we, we're serving the communities in all of the markets in which we operate in. And we, we try to make sure we're doing good for our customers, that we're working with the communities and helping them develop. We're trying to foster economic development and we're trying to foster particularly international trade because we know how important international trade is to the economic development of a country. Um, so it's a challenge. It can be very challenging at times, and you would argue it's quite challenging at the moment. But I do believe what we are doing is good in the communities in which we operate in. I just want to go to another challenge as well, and it's something you're probably grappling with at the moment, and that's materiality, because it's such a difficult concept. Of course, it's just how far or how important is something for investors for you to abide by that in your ESG guidelines, uh, particularly in sectors like the high emitting sectors. So how do you manage that? Yeah, no, the high emitting sectors are a, a great topic because on the one hand, you would say, well, the banking sector needs to transition away from the high emitting sectors. But my argument on that is that doesn't solve the problem. That doesn't help the high emit emitting sectors invent the new technologies to bring down their carbon footprint, to transition their existing business models, whether it's power generation or transportation, to change the way they do business. And what the banking sector should do is to help those sectors transition from their existing technological base, their existing business models, onto business models and technologies that are more compatible with the Paris Accord goals. And that the banking sector should be there to help finance that transition, because that transition is needed for the world as a whole. And us walking away from the old sectors does not necessarily achieve transition. It doesn't achieve the goal of the Paris Accord. And that's why I think we have a very material role to play in providing the finance for the infrastructure that needs to be built to transition industries and businesses from to. And so briefly in your ESG review, you talk about your values, the value, you know, that you value differences, you get things done. How far down the line when you look at what you'd like to get done are you? Well, we published some targets uh, around sustainability about four years ago, three, four years ago, uh, and they were five year targets. And I'm pleased to say we've already exceeded that target. So in that regard, what we committed to three, four years ago, we've already done it. But I also know those targets were not enough. We have to go further. And that's what the next strategy phase of our strategy is all about. There's a huge amount of infrastructure to be financed. I see it as a huge opportunity for the financial services sector. I've quantified that for our own business in the next 10 years at somewhere between 750 billion and a trillion of financing activity that needs to be performed to help companies who are customers of HSBC transition their business models from current technology to new technology. I look at it as a huge opportunity and that's what I now want to move on to and to get that business plan done the way we did the last one. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Noel. Noel Quinn, Group CEO of HSBC. Pleasure. Thank you, Sarah.